got a risotto nero for you. So in here you've got your risotto rice, a little bit of parmesan, a little bit of butter. This is coloured jet black because we use cuttlefish ink in there. So it's got a wonderful flavour to it and really, really eye-catching. This, as usual, we send you with a risotto cooking liquor, sorry. So carefully cut that open and then you need all of the liquor into the pan and then get it onto the heat. I've got my little spat in here, so just onto a medium heat. There it goes. And I'm going to bring it up to the simmer. Keep stirring it occasionally. You don't need to keep on stirring it constantly, but keep it so it's not going to stick. And then once it's up to the heat, about four to five minutes, just until it's all nicely and rich, but you don't want it dried out and stodgy, so take it off beforehand. Uh, garnishes, we've got a bit of cuttlefish just there. So really nice pieces of cuttlefish, all coloured, uh, lovely golden. A little bit of charred lemon, which um, sort of adds a new dim dimension to the lemon juice. It kind of sweetens up nicely. I'm going to put both of those in the oven for four to five minutes. So in there you go. Bring my, keep an eye on my risotto that's just starting to heat up there. And then when we come to serve it, I've got my red pepper and rocket salsa, just some chopped rocket in there. That's coming up to room temperature. And then we're going to open that up and just dress it over the top of the risotto. Really, really simple, bang in flavour, back in about four minutes. So, out comes the lemon and the cuttlefish. Beauty of these containers is because they're just they don't they're not like um, the metal where you really burn yourself them, so you can just grab them. So, hot plate there, and it's all ready for risotto. And this is just coming up, been on about four and a half minutes now, just giving it a nice stir, last part of the cooking. You can see there, look at the texture. See how it's nice and starting to get nice and creamy. It literally needs another 10 seconds and we'll be ready to go. So, there we go. Let's turn the heat up there. So, that's all good. Let's get my little bit of salsa opened up. So, I'm just going to open that up there. I'm going to get a little dish. I'm just going to pour my nice bit of Red pepper salsa, so it's got all that lovely rocket in there, rapeseed oil. I'm get it all out. Really, really easy with these compostable back vacuum pack bags. So there you go. Right, let's plate it up. Let's get all all of our jet black look at that. Stunning colour. All of that into the centre. And then let's just tamp it out with that spatula or a spoon, whichever you're serving up, get it nice and even. So now you're ready to go, there we go, lovely. Take a spoon, then we're going to put first of all our charred lemon just on the side and then let's get a little bit of cuttlefish in there. So we've got our first of all little tentacles all charred off. I'm going to put a nice big spoon of salsa. Just there, now I'm going to take a little bit more, just for that really eye catch an extra bit of colour. Get all the juice happening as well. There you go. Back to our cuttlefish. A few more pieces. And there you go. Look at that. Let's do that, just to rearrange that slightly so it's standing up, a bit of height. Lovely. So that is our starter, risotto nero, saute cuttlefish, red pepper, rocket, charred lemon. Here we've got the chicken baked in hay for you now. Uh, we've got chicken here. Uh, we've got a little croquette of the chicken leg. That's got hay infused bechamel going through the center of it. We've got pickled beetroots, foam beans with a little hazelnut butter on the top. And we've got hay infused velouté, chicken velouté, and a pressing of beetroots to go with it. So what you want to do, beans need to go in the oven with the lid on. So the bio lid, that's going to make it easy for them just to heat up without drying out. The croquette is going to go um, just as it is, so it crisps up on the top. And we've got our beetroots there, sort of chicken. What you want to do with this is the container we've sent you with hay in the bottom. Now just snip open your little backpack bag chicken which we prepared for you and put that all including any juices we put a bit of chicken stock in there put that all into the container now put the lid on 
and that means you're going to lock in some of that steam as it finishes off cooking. This is going to go in the oven now, 14 to 16 minutes, or until quite in the centre, really, really important, it's obviously chicken. And then the remaining garnishes, once that's been in a few minutes now, I'm going to put the beans, the croquette and the beetroot. The beetroot is going to go in a little pan of simmering water, put it in, turn the heat off and just leave it to sit there. All three of these are going to go in the oven for about 10 to 12 minutes until hot. The sauce we're going to warm up on the stove and the beetroots will be all ready for us to plate up when we come back. Okay, so we've got a nice hot plate ready there. Just going to grill off. Then let's get our beetroot. And we'll be all ready to plate up our hay baked chicken. So there we go, that's our chicken just there. It's been baked in the hay. It smells really, really nice when you undo that. There's our beans there, the butter all melted. Get a little bit of oil just on your beetroots. These are your pickled beetroots. And a tiny bit of seasoning as well to dress them up. Give them a little stir. And they'll be all ready to garnish at the end. So take your little croquette. That's got the hay scented bechamel going through the center. Then we're gonna carefully cut open a little sachet containing your beetroot. Be really, really careful with it because it is very, very delicate. Then what you want to do is just snip down with a pair of scissors and just take off that eco clink film from around the outside, like so. Then make sure you use a fish slice, a tiny bit of seasoning on the top, and again, just a little bit of oil just to kind of Make that nice and shiny. Lift it up and drain it off because you've got quite a bit of juice in there. So we'll put the big tree really, really nice way. Serve them up. Take some of your beans, like so, and they've got that really nice little hazelnut butter. Just pile them up. Take a little bit of the actual butter as well. Just dress them back. Then next, your chicken. Take your chicken out of the container, and just as you do, just do your best to get as much of that hay off as possible. Whilst we use it for flavour in the cooking, we don't really want to be actually putting that on the plate. So, there we go. Bit of seasoning. You can cut the chicken if you want, but I prefer just to keep that nice and whole. And now I'm going to sit the chicken on the top. Beetroots. So these are pickled heritage beetroots. We just pickled them in a little sherry vinegar, a little bit of muscovado sugar, thyme in there, juniper, really lovely flavours. Just dot those all around. And they'll add a really nice freshness with that rich hay velouté but we're going to finish off in a second. So that's just about enough of them. Then quick clean down. Take your hay velouté which we've just warmed up. Just put a nice bit of that in the centre. Right, so go back. Get a little bit of your oil and beetroot that's come out of the cooking liquor. And just go round, just for that lovely little bit of colour. Like so. There we go. That's my hay baked chicken, lovely little croquette with the hay uh, scented bechamel and pressing of beetroots. Onto one of our Yubi Chef favourite desserts now, we've got rum barba. So you've got your barba there, lovely little dough, and um, this is going to go in the oven for about four minutes. That just warms it up and crisps up the outside slightly. Then our garnishes, we've got some lovely strawberries, bang on seasonal, we've got some crispy mint just in there, and then this is what really important, the really important part of the barba, we've got our syrup. Now this is a syrup with rum in there which we're going to baste the uh, barba in so it will double in size. This is a strawberry daiquiri flavoured syrup. So we've got lime in there, we've got strawberries, and of course we've got our white rum. That's just going to go on the heat and start bringing that to the simmer. 
my apricot glaze I'm going to put in my little pan, just bring to the boil, just ready to glaze the bar bar. When my bar bar comes out of the oven, I'm going to drop it into the syrup and then I'm going to baste it with a spoon, keep on basting it and then the, the sponge will absorb all of the syrup and it will double and we're going to drain it off. So we'll come back about four or so minutes and I'll show you uh, basting the bar bar and finishing it off. So I've just been basting my rum bar bar now for a few minutes and as you can see, it's doubled in size, keep on basting and then what you want to do is very, very carefully get it out and put it just onto some absorbent paper. So what you don't want to be doing is serving a rum bar which is full of liquid of course. Then we take our little glaze, so this is just an apricot jam, which we're just going to use a pastry brush, completely up to you. So we're just going to let that drain for a few seconds. And whilst we do that, let's take our strawberries, again put them on hold, completely up to you. I like to just cut them down. We're going to arrange them just around our bowl. And then we're going to sit our rum bar bar in the centre. So a few more there, just get one more. Needs one for me to eat. So that's all ready for the bar bar. Then lift your bar bar in and just rock it back onto the spoon. There we go. You want to serve it nice and warm. Take a knife and just, not all the way through, just so you can open it up like that. And then get your Diplomat cream, cut the end off. And then this is, you need to go to the table quite quickly after this. But we're gonna pipe like that. Look at this, lovely. Finish it off. That crispy mint. And we're all ready to go. So that's my rum bar bar with strawberries and a strawberry daiquiri syrup.